Hey guys, I am here with Kelly Martin. I'm so excited to be interviewing her. And Kelly is the team lead of Homes and Farms and you guys are an EXP team, correct? Yes, correct. Awesome, awesome. And how long have you been with EXP? Um, I've been with EXP for two years. Okay, and you like it? Mm -hmm. Yep, I was recently, uh, or I was with Remax before that for 10 years, or 11 years actually. Okay, great. So tell me a little about your business and everything. I, I tell you what, I was just looking at your website a minute ago, and I absolutely adore it. Like, it's amazing. On your uh, Homes and Farm website. Yeah, we are in the process of rehabbing that completely redone. Oh, okay. Well, it looks great now. I'm sure it'll look even better when you're done with it. I love the, the drone footage and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's really, really nice. So tell me a little about, I know you guys are really experts in homes and farms. Tell me a little bit about where you guys work and, and things like that. What areas did you cover and stuff like that? Okay, so I started home and farms, um, gosh, I want to say 12 years ago. And um, we have grown from where we originally started in East Tennessee in the Chattanooga area. So we cover Chattanooga into Georgia. And then we cover West Tennessee, so we cover Jackson, Memphis, and we do have a partnering um, team member in northern Mississippi. Um, and we do cover Knoxville as well. So um, we do specialize in horse farms, but we also cover residential properties. That's why I was asking about the websites, because we have two websites currently. We have homeandfarms.com, which is geared more towards the horse farms and estates and luxury properties. And then we have Selling Mid-South, which is geared more towards residential properties, and we are in the process of merging the two together. And it will be just one website, but it will have that effect on both. Oh, that's great. I'm sure that'll be amazing. Um, tell me a little bit about the market, where you guys are, and, and how things are going. Are you seeing, are we still in a seller's market? Are we kind of moving toward a flat market? What do you think? Well, I think it just depends on your price point um, because we're seeing it that with, I want to say like around 250 and less, we are still in multiple offers. Um, we're currently working a deal right now where we're trying to get a couple of houses under contract, a couple of my agents, and um, they're going up against multiple offers under a certain price point. But once you start getting over a certain price point, then we, we have seen a little bit of a shift where it has slowed down a little bit. Um, but I think it just kind of goes right back to pricing. You know, it, it was more people could get away with it if they overpriced a house that they could sell it pretty quickly because there were there's just such a shortage of inventory. I still see a shortage of inventory. We're still seeing a shortage of inventory. Yeah. Um, I would say that, you know, it just depends on the, the particular home, again, how it's, how it looks, how it's presented, if it's presented correctly, when it gets on the market, we're still seeing multiple offers on those properties, but the houses that never probably should have been multiple offers, they're starting to sit a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, I think the fact that, you know, we've got that shortage of inventory, that's going to continue to drive appreciation up. It was funny, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were like, my dad's telling me not to buy, you know, because the housing market's going to crash. And it's, it's, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm always explaining that. I don't know if you feel that way too, but the media is really putting that out there that, that, that it's not a good time to buy. And I personally think it's an amazing time to buy. And um, it's difficult. Do you think that, you're seeing that a little bit where you have to kind of explain these things and, and, and really educate people. I think we're really educating a lot of people right now as to what's going on with the market, that it's not going to crash, right? That it's a great time to buy and, and things like that. Do you feel the same way? I do. Um, I feel like it's a constant where um, the media has really put into people's heads that it's not a good time to buy and that the housing market is going to crash like it did in 2008 um, and they need to wait it out. It is the worst thing that could, that you could tell somebody right now because it's not true. We have such a shortage of inventory. There are, it's projected that there are numerous amount of buyers that are going to hit the market still and inventory is not projected to catch up. Um, it's not going to grow. It's, at quite the rate that it did last year. I want to say it was like around 30% growth last year, which is which is huge compared to what it was in the past. Um, but 
telling people to yeah. wait is they're just going to have a higher priced house and still higher priced interest rates. It's it's not a good thing to wait. And no, we are. Absolutely. I feel like I'm constantly educating people about why we're different than what we were in 2008. Yeah, in 2008, there was a gigantic amount of inventory. And you know, I think there's three reasons why there's more inventory. Um, one is the baby boomers are no longer moving out of their houses as much, right? They're, there's a lot of in-home healthcare inside of their houses instead of moving out, which creates more households. Um, two, we've got all the investors buying up so many homes and renting them out, right? Which we didn't have back in 08 at all. That wasn't existing. And three, the millennials who are a gigantic market are now buying more homes. And that alone is going to continue from what I've been told for at least another 10 years, right? So for many, many more years, we're going to all experience great appreciation and this idea that there's a housing market crash coming is foolish. Mm -hmm. And what happens, as you know, the people that listen to us, their appreciations just keep going like this, right? And they keep making more money in the real estate like, like we do, right? Mm -hmm. I have three houses. You probably have multiple mm -hmm. houses. I mean, we invest in what we know. And I think that it's so important for us to keep educating people to that effect, mm -hmm. right? That they it is a great time to buy and i and it is in my heart i know it's an amazing time to buy and it really hurts me when i see all of that pop up in the media and things like that because it's like you're absolutely spot on it's not true mm -hmm. you know sure. and people do need to be buying real estate right now and it's such an amazing time mm -hmm. so um what what else do you see um so i know your company is growing i see that you know Tell me a little bit about that. You've got the websites coming together. Mm -hmm. How many agents do you guys have right now? Um, we Our team currently has eight members on it, um, and that includes one assistant. And we have two more that are in the onboarding process. They're, um, they're finishing up. One's finishing up her wow. courses, and the other one is trying to pass that real estate exam that is difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is challenging. I think a lot of people don't realize how difficult that exam is. I've, I have a lot of friends that have taken it and it's, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not a walk in the park. Ours isn't either actually, you know, it, either one of them. I think a lot of people think that what we do is easy. You know, they, it's, Oh, you, anybody can do this. That's absolutely not right. true. You know, what we do is specialized and there's a lot of learning that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, uh, Hope they hope they get that passed and everything. Okay. So, are there any other growth plans for the future that you guys are thinking about? Anything that you're trying to merge into or change into or anything like that? Um, not just growing, just continuing to grow. We're always recruiting. We're always looking for the right agents. Um, you know, one of the great things of why I run my team under EXP and I don't branch off and make it its own brokerage is because I like the growth ability. So we do serve three states. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking to grow into more states and we can do that through the power of EXP versus just being an individual brokerage and then, you know, joining every small little MLS as an individual brokerage. So we have that, that power to be able to grow like that. So we're always looking for more agents for our team, even if it's um, not directly on our team, but associated with us. Yeah, that's awesome. The fact that you can, you know, merge into other states is huge right now to build your footprint yeah. and everything. And that's, um, that's, I similar do the same thing. And I, I think that's awesome. It just kind of gives you a lot more, um, a lot more expansion possibilities and things like that, especially in a market where certain areas are, are changing and things, it's nice to move into other markets as well. How, how long have you had the company open? You said, I think you told me, yeah, 12 years? Yeah, 12 years. Was mm -hmm. it 12? It was 12 years in May. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Okay, I'd love to ask this question, but where do you see real estate going for the next year or so? I know we talked about a little bit about what we think is gonna happen, but you're the expert. So in your different areas, what do you see happening with appreciation in the next, say, year to two years or so? I think it's going to slow down. Um, you know, the last two years, the way it was appreciating is just not sustainable. Um, if it continued at that rate, housing prices would be astronomical. It just wouldn't even make sense. 
Um, I mean, I had people that bought houses yeah. and a year later turn around and made a hundred thousand dollars plus just off the appreciation of a house in a year. Um, there's no way, there's no way you could sustain yeah. that. So I think we're going to go back a little bit more of what's normal, not completely down to what it used to be, where it was like about a three, if you could get three to 6% growth on your house per year, you were in a pretty good spot. Um, I think it's going to go more somewhere between 10 and 12% growth. I don't think we're going to go all the way back there. But I do, th I do see the brakes being pumped right now. Um, but I don't think it ever was meant or could sustain where it was. Um, housing prices is going, they're, it's going to continue to climb. People need houses, like they need food. Like we're not gonna all go live in teepees. So <laughs> the idea that all of a sudden our market yeah, is gonna absolutely. crash, and you know, part of that huge crash that happened um, was because the bank, the banks were lending to people who weren't qualified. Um, at such a large rate, yes. and that's not been the case. That's not the case. Um, no. no, gosh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not like it was back then. No, I was a subprime. So I, I people laugh because I like, I'm part of the problem from back then, you know, <laughs> because I was a subprime account yeah. executive, which, which, which is, uh, you know, the, the kiss of death back then for you caused it. Right. But the, the truth is, yes, there were many, 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 many programs that probably shouldn't have existed, you know, like yeah. stated loans and things like that. But there were a lot of bank statement loans and stuff that were amazing for people where we fully documented their income and we got 12 or 24 months bank statements. And yes, we were going to higher loan to values, but those loans were performing mm -hmm. and they were performing all the way up until the crash. What, what got us in reality was the stated yeah. loans, right? And I can remember these things. They were pretty pretty legit, right? There were people working at McDonald's, not with my not with my loans, but there were probably people working at McDonald's saying they were making $15,000, right? And some lenders were accepting that, which was ridiculous. Um, but that's what really I personally feel being in the middle of it, unfortunately, took down the mortgage industry was a lot of stated mm -hmm. loans and uh loans that just were not profitable and all of a sudden when it happened it happened you yeah. know it was rough but there it is absolutely not like that mm -hmm. now right <laughs> like your bank statement of loans are just now starting to hit like 85 90 percent mm -hmm. it's 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 way different than it was back then. And I don't, the stated loans, I don't think there are any unless you're at 80% right now, 80 really. So it's a completely mm -hmm. different land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely agree with that. And yeah. that's, that's kind of what I think is gonna happen with housing market and where we're going from here and why we're not gonna crash. No, absolutely, yeah. I, I'm, it's so good to hear that because I, I hear I'm, I'm combating that just like you are every single day with people on the phone and their family telling them, don't buy, don't buy. And I'm just sitting there going, oh my gosh, you're losing so much appreciation and paying so much rent too. Have you guys seen uh, large rent increases in your areas mm -hmm. also? Um, it's unbelievable what we're seeing, just insane amounts of rent oh, increases, yeah. Yeah. right? Like, are you guys seeing oh, yeah. that as I well? I mean, it's definitely yeah. the rent's yeah. higher than a mortgage, yeah. and it, it's it's always been that way. Um, if you can even find the rental, um, and then when you do find the rental, they they can be not in the greatest shape, um, you know, worn out, worn down, or or whatnot. But um, yeah, it, it's the renting the the rentals are hard to come by, and they're high. Absolutely. Well. Please tell everybody where they can find you guys, you know, give them, give them some phone numbers, some addresses, some emails or whatever, because I want you guys to know that these guys are experts in their area at what they do and, and the areas that they cover. And if you need to buy a house or list a house, these, these are the guys to call. Okay. So please tell them, tell them how we can tell, tell us how so, we can find you. Um, you can access us through our website, which is homeandfarms.com or our other website, which is sellingmidsouth.com. And it has um, all of our contact information on there, the areas that we cover, 
Uh, we cover majority of Tennessee besides a couple small little pockets here and there, but we've got agents spread across the state, um, mainly because a lot of the people we relocate here are coming to this beautiful state for numerous reasons. Um, and they do not have a specific area in Tennessee that they want to be. They just know they want to be in Tennessee. And our team is here to serve people like that and local people. We are very invested in our communities. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. It's been yeah, a pleasure talking you, to you. You're welcome.